Hello and welcome to my film history review. I'm going to be going over day one. What we spoke about today, I believe the way to pronounce it is the auteur theory. It's French, you have to forgive me if I mess up on the pronunciation. But of I pulled this excerpt directly out of the book and just going to read the underlying parts. The auteur theory is the very best films have generally resulted from the clear vision and unifying intelligence of a single controlling mind with primary responsibility for the whole film. The auteur theory identifies the director whose personal artistic signature is evident through the work as the film's author or dominant creator. Now as the teacher went on to explain the movie we were talking about was Singing in the Rain. And his thing with Singing in the Rain was, okay, Singing in the Rain had two directors. So who was the auteur in that? Uh, it had two different writers. And also the producer, who was Arthur Freed. Who had the most control over that uh, to make that film what it is? Next, we had a classroom discussion about the cultural significance of the film because the movie is about the transition of the silent films going to talkies then we went over how we measure the cultural significance through the circle of culture and he gave us the diagram now it may be known as the circle of culture as well as the circuit of culture where we have regulations representation identification production and consumption and let me very quickly go over the five aspects of the circuit of culture consumption is how it will be consumed the representation what is there to see what is represented production how was it made how was it written how was it financed identification how do you relate to it regulation how the laws affected of ratings or censorship next we begin to speak about early film history and we went over the inventions and the innovators now one of the inventions was the zoetrope or also known as the will of life and this is one of the several pre-film animation devices that produced the illusion of motion by displaying a sequence of drawings or photographs showing progressive phases of that motion. Here we have Mybridge who is a photographer who was able to produce photographs that recorded half seconds of motion. He did not invent the motion picture but he did add to the science that was behind the development of photography. Murray was a French physiologist who created a photo gun that could expose film at a rate of 12 images a second. He was the first to combine flexible film stock and an intermittent mechanism while photographing motion. Here's a rendering of his photo gun. Now George Eastman may be a more familiar name. He invented the Kodak. He introduced the transparent celluloid roll film. Thomas Edison designed machines for making and showing moving pictures. History says that on a trip to Paris, Edison saw Murray's camera and copied it. Dixon, his assistant, obtained Kodak film and designed a kinetoscope camera taking pictures and a kinetoscope viewing box. The standard here now was 35 millimeter strips with the four guide holes cut on each side. This picture shows how a kinetoscope would work. Now here we have a partnership of Paul and Akers. Edison had premiered his kinetoscope October 1894 in London. Paul and Akers were producers of photographic equipment and they recreated Edison's kinetoscope outside the United States. For some reason Edison never saw the patent outside the United States. Now Paul and Akers had a brief partnership, but Paul was the first to be able to sell 
the uh, machine instead of just leasing them. Next, we have the Lumineer brothers, who were French. They got a local kinetoscope exhibitor to produce shorter films cheaper than Edison. Remember, Edison was holding all the copyrights and patents at that time. Now, the brothers designed the cinematograph that used 35 millimeter film, and the rate of speed was changed to 16 frames per second. So now we have a new standard now. George Malays was a performing musician who owned his own theater. He wanted to, to create his own films. The Luminaire brothers, they wasn't selling their machines at that point. So he got the projector from the English inventor, R.W. Paul. George Malays created over 500 films in his lifetime. One of his most famous, which is the rendering here, is A Trip to the Moon. Okay, that's it for this review. You can go back and reread the slides to reinforce the information, and you can also click on this link to go to the playlist I created to round out the edges for everything for film history. Take care and good luck.